Good morning, Christ Temple, and welcome to our online virtual Sunday morning services. Make sure you remind your friends and family that they can log on every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. for our Facebook watch party. And if they are not on social media, that's fine. The service is also available live from our YouTube channel. We want to remind you that there are three ways that you can continue to support the ministry through giving. You can physically go to the sanctuary on Sunday mornings from 11 a.m. until 12 noon and pay your tithes and offering. You can mail them to our secured mailing address, Post Office Box 60310, North Charleston, South Carolina, 29419. Or you can pay securely online through PayPal or through our website. If you have a PayPal account, just go to your PayPal account and you can submit your giving there. If not, you can go through our webpage. A PayPal account is not required. Or you can use the Givelify app. It's available for you to give anywhere and at any time. Just tap Give and Done. Download it to your smartphones today and search for Christ Temple Church. Listen, guys, we are here for you. Contact us at any time if you need us. We are available through our church website. You can reach out through our social media platforms. You can send us an email or you can call us at 843-554-3434. You can also reach out to the deacon and or elder of the month. For the month of April, Elder Alberta Webb, Elder Donna Edwards, Deacon Sam President, and from the Health Ministry, Sister Ashley Robinson. Now, let's join the Sunday morning service already in progress. Thank you so much for joining us today on our live broadcast. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, Lord, just to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. God, thank you for how you've kept us and how you've protected us, Lord. Thank you for how you've provided for all of our needs, Lord. Father, we come with hearts that are filled with gratitude, Lord, because we understand that you hold the world in the palm of your hand, Lord, and that nothing happens without your knowing. And Father, we understand, Lord, that if you allow something to happen, oh God, that you have something greater on the other side of it. And so, Lord, we come and we worship you, Lord, because we understand that this too shall pass. And Father, after these things, your glory will be revealed in a way that we could have never imagined so father we render this moment into your hands and father we say have thine own way holy spirit move as you will god speak as you desire father we pray right now lord that you will give us listening ears and receptive hearts lord don't let us oh god leave this broadcast the way that we've entered but father after we've said all that we've said and sung all that we've sung Father, we pray, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that your presence will be revealed in our lives in a new and living way. So, Father, we render this moment into your hands, and we give you all praise, honor, and glory, for it belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together out there in your living room, your bedroom, wherever you may be watching this. You know. 
resting place There's so much joy I found in you My resting place I found a river of joy And it's in you I found a river of joy And it's in you I found a river of joy And it's in you I found
so many doors you open, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me. You've been better than good to me so many doors. So many doors you open, so many ways. So Stand right where you are. Thank you, Lord. To confess that the Lord has been yes, good. God. He's Call truly me. been good. Oh. And can we just take it back a little bit? Because sometimes we just need God's help. So we just drop back and say, Lord, oh Lord, I'm asking you one more time. Right there for me. 
said I'm in need when I'm weak Will you strengthen me when I'm weak I need you Lord to strengthen me when I'm weak Oh Lord I need you to strengthen me when I'm weak Say Lord strengthen me the name to call on. Strengthen me when I'm weak. Oh Lord, I want you. Strengthen me when I'm weak. Oh, will you strengthen me when I'm weak? Come on, Jesus. Strengthen me when I'm weak. Come on, Jesus. Strengthen me when I'm weak. Come on, Jesus. It's all right if you want to clap your hands and get your praise on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Jesus. Strengthen me. Come on, Jesus. Strengthen me. Where won't you? Strengthen me when I'm weak. Come on, strengthen when I'm weak Will you strengthen me when I'm weak Fill me up, Lord Fill me up when I'm torn down Oh, hallelujah Yes, Lord It is our request and our prayer Strengthen us, Lord Where we are weak and build us up where we are torn down Lord we thank you for this day we thank you for this opportunity Father just to fellowship with you we are honored that you have chosen to join us today we're grateful for the opportunity to be able to serve you in this capacity indeed the Lord is good through all that we are encountering the Lord is continuing to show his faithfulness. Morning by morning, brand new mercies we see. And for that, we should be grateful. Amen. Indeed, there is a word from the Lord today. And it came out of conversation with the Lord in regards to what our worship really does for us as the believers. It's so important in times like these that we learn how to even get closer to our God. This is not a time for uh, a vacation mentality. I know that we're have, we have these stay home orders, and you know we can't gather in the in the traditional manner, but we have to learn how to gravitate to the Spirit and learn how to keep our worship alive and vibrant and so the Lord began to speak to my heart in regards to what our worship really does for us and so uh, that's how this uh, sermon came from conversation with the Lord and so we're going to look at a very familiar passage of scripture Luke chapter 8 verses 40 through 48 and uh, the Bible reads so it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. 
and he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. Uh, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. They just began to press against him. Now a woman, having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all the livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, she came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately, her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes are thronging and pressing you. And you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. I want to talk to you from the sermon title, Automatic Transfer. Uh, we see there is a very familiar passage of scripture here. There is uh, Jesus walking back into uh, a place where he had been and had done many miracles and had fed so many before. The multitudes were glad to see him. And Jairus, who was a ruler, heard that there was something, something going on uh, that could help him. He had a daughter who was sick unto death, and he heard that the healer was in the region. So he went to seek out this healer. He went to seek out Jesus, and on his journey, on uh, Jesus' journey to Jairus' house, uh, a woman who had an issue of blood. We know that it has been preached our life long, this woman with the issue of blood, and she finds herself in a predicament. Uh, dealing with the customs of the time, she should not have been out in the open. Uh, we could say that she had a stay-home order on her. Uh, she was not allowed to be in society. She was not allowed to, to uh, interact with others. She had to keep her distance because she was unclean. Sounds very familiar to what we are encountering today. Uh, and so it is that because she had this condition, she was shamed and she was shunned and she was shut up and shut out. Uh, but she knew that she had spent everything she had trying to get well by her own means and her own measures. And the Bible tells us that she spent everything on doctors and physicians and they could do her no good. We know this is true because Luke, uh, as he recounts the account, he is a physician himself, and, and I'm sure he read, he read about her story and realized that everybody, all of his colleagues, did everything they could with the modern medicine, and it just didn't help her problem. The Bible declares that she said within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. So the Bible says that she pressed away to Jesus and she touched him and she was healed. I want to talk about uh, what she did. The action was she, she touched, she touched Jesus. And Jesus said something very profound. Uh, he said to her daughter, daughter, that's key, that's key, that's key because he gave her some identification. 
A, to, to be a daughter meant that she had to have some connection to the father. Uh, what that tells us is that she first believed. I, I want to say something to you uh, today. You must believe. Um, it is important that we, as the children of God, operate in belief, believing that our God is able. In fact, the scripture says, Jesus himself says in Mark 9 and 23, uh, Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes. Jesus talks about the power of belief. Belief brings the impossible into the sphere of possible. Uh, belief uh, causes a transfer of deficiency, glory to God, to a place of plenty. So, so Jesus, he goes on to say, uh, even in Mark chapter 16, Jesus is talking to his followers and he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Something happens when we believe. In my name, Jesus says, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. And he goes on to say, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is not a passage for us to uh, tempt God with ignorance, but it is a passage that strengthens our faith to understand no matter what situation we encounter in life, if we put our trust and our faith and our belief in God, he will work things out. So, so we see here that she touched Jesus with belief. That, that is key. That is key because when she touched Jesus with belief, her identity transformed. She was no longer a woman with an issue. She was a daughter with a situation. Lord have mercy. She was taken out of the obscure and she was put into context. Her belief, glory to God, gave her definition and it gave God grounds and opportunity to fix what she was concerned with. Our belief positions us, glory to the Lamb of God. Our belief positions us in a place where God can get glory through us, to us, and out of us. So she believed. She believed within herself if she could just get to Jesus. If she could touch the hem of his garment that she would be made whole. She didn't know how it would work. She just believed that it would. And so what are you saying to me right now? I'm telling you, stop focusing on the how and just understand that God will. So, so as we, we see, we see here that Jesus, he blesses her and she blessed herself with her belief. Jesus says, daughter, 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 go. He says, be of good cheer. He says, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now, sometimes we wonder if, you know, if Jesus says that your faith has made you well, and he tells her to go in peace, why, why did he have to give her peace after she was healed? Well, because, see, you got to understand, sometimes you can be in a situation so long, the paranoia of the time the time frame and the condition and the situation still tries to rob your moments with memories. Lord, have mercy. And Jesus had to minister to her mind so that she would be able to operate in her new life. So he says to her, go, go in peace, go in peace. Uh, anytime we adopt belief, anytime we hold on to our belief, there is a transference. John 1 and 12 says this, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. 
to those who believe in his name. As soon as we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, as soon as we put our belief in him, there is a transference of power. We become children of God, not just the creation. In other words, we adopt a new identity. Uh, we adopt a, a new focus, a new connection, a new relationship. So here it is in Colossians 1 and 13. Let's go a little further to understand exactly what happens when we adopt a belief. When we adopt belief, it tells us he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us or translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. So what happens when we believe God, there is a transference. We are now transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, into the son of his love. There is a transference. And so let's just talk a little bit about this transference, automatic transfer. Um, if you have uh, any type of savings uh, for your money, any type of bank account, Whenever you have money in your checking or in your savings account and, and, and it runs a little low, you can do what we call a transfer. Uh, there, there, there's something uh, that you have something to fall back on, but it requires a few things that have to happen. Uh, you have to initiate the transfer. Uh, you can do what we call an automatic transfer where you set it up every week or every month to make sure this amount comes out of this account and goes into the other to cover, watch this, to cover the cost of your expenses. There was an automatic transfer uh, uh, for the spirit of the woman who had the issue of blood. I want to explain uh, what happens here. What happens here. We talk about uh, the transfer. The transfer. When she believed, when she believed, uh, there was a transference. She received a new country, a new culture, and a new currency. She was transferred from the kingdom of darkness where there was lack and deficiency and and she was transferred into a new country, a new country uh, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of Jesus, the, the son of God's love. She was transferred. What does that mean? It meant that she received, watch this now, a new government. What does that mean? It meant that she now had the opportunity to operate at a different level. She had now an opportunity to operate in new litigation. There were new laws in play for her. She didn't have to just deal with what life dealt her. Glory to God. She was able to go to God and put things in perspective and receive healing for the torment of her soul. Uh, she received a new country. Uh, she was no longer subject to the things of her past. She had received a new government. There was a new order that was placed in her life. The moment that she believed, the moment that she said within herself, if I can just touch the the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. The moment that she made up in her mind to get to Jesus, new laws were in play. In other words, the old system, the, the, the old way that she had to stay hidden no longer applies. Lord, have mercy. I'm going somewhere. Uh, she received not only a new country or a new place of position, but she received a new culture. There was something that transformed on the inside of her. There became new social norms. In other words, she didn't have to, to stay hidden any longer. Um, there was a new interaction. She no longer had to hide in the shame and the fear, uh, but there was adopted a boldness in her because society said because she had this issue she was not allowed to be seen she was not allowed to be interacted with nobody was supposed to talk to her she wasn't supposed to be in public and she certainly wasn't supposed to be reaching out trying to touch Jesus here's the thing here's the thing when she believed it gave her a new
new level of interaction, a new level of operation. As soon as we believe, we no longer have to stay bound to sin. We no longer have to stay bound to addiction. We no longer have to stay bound to the things that were a part of our past. But as soon as we put our belief in Jesus, it gives us a new ability to move and operate in the earth. Then she received a new currency. Currency. Preacher, why is that important? Because, see, the things that worked uh, uh, when she was in uh, the kingdom of darkness, uh, everything operated by fear. She did everything she did out of fear. She hid herself because of fear of people knowing what her condition was. Uh, she, she stayed in the background because of fear of what people would say if they saw her out and about. Uh, so, so fear governed her interactions. Fear governed her life. Preacher, what are you saying? A lot of us have been operating with the currency of fear. Everything we do is, what is somebody else going to say? What is somebody else going to think? Uh, how will I be viewed? Oh, Lord, have mercy. That's a fear that we have to be delivered from. And so she, 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 was, she received a new currency. She was no longer uh, looking at fear, but her faith began to fuel her actions. And, and the Bible tells us that she had faith over fear per se. She wasn't looking. She wasn't looking for what the others were looking for. There was something different in what she needed from Jesus. Preacher, what do you mean? Let's go to the, let's go to the story. Here it is now that Jesus is walking to Jairus's house and the multitudes are there and they're pressing against Jesus and they're thronging Jesus and and here's the thing here's the thing here's the difference because see when she touched Jesus she didn't touch him like the others touched him because Jesus had blessed the bread and the fish and had given out so much the multitudes were looking for a deposit they were looking for an automatic deposit. They were looking for Jesus to give them something. She wasn't looking for a deposit. She was looking for a withdrawal. Lord have mercy. There's, there's, there's a big difference. There's a big difference because she wasn't looking for a handout. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Uh, the multitudes who were around, around Jesus were looking for handouts. He said to them at one point, you only follow me for the fishes and the loaves. You only want me to deposit into you, but you don't want to withdraw. Lord have mercy. You don't want to withdraw. You don't want to put your hand and touch. Touch me. See, see, she she didn't want to deposit from Jesus. She wanted to make a withdrawal. She wanted to have an automatic transfer. She, she wasn't looking for nobody to, to do nothing else for her. She said, I believe if I can just get to him. Lord have mercy I can get glory to God what I need from him and so the Bible the Bible goes on to tell us that that she pressed her way this is so key that we understand this see when she believed it empowered her with a spirit of boldness she came out of the garments of, of, of obscurity, those things that hid her condition. And she said, if I'm going to get what I need, I got to be open and truthful. I got to climb my way through the obstacles of my fear, through the obstacle of what society would say, through the obstacle of my shame, through the obstacle of my past, through the obstacle of even my present, through the obstacle of my condition and my doubt diagnosis and the Bible says that she pressed her way through she pressed her way through everybody that was looking for a deposit and she said I don't want what you want she says because see I don't have what you have she says but what I need what I need it's got to come it's got to start from the inside of me and so she had a belief that if I can just get to him she said if I can just touch him I'll be made whole Bible says that when she touched him, power, good God have mercy, power, virtue, anointing, glory came from Jesus. Lord have mercy. And she received her withdrawal. See, he is the I am God. He is the I am that I am. If we can learn how to just worship him in spirit and in truth, whatever 
whatever we stand in the need of will be withdrawn from his presence. You don't have to wait for something else to happen. All you got to do is make up in your mind, if I can just get into my secret place, if I can just worship him despite how I feel, if I can still lift my hands in my living room, if I can still open my mouth while I'm driving my car, if I can still get my praise on while I'm in my bedroom watching this broadcast, Jesus will still be able to see about me. Jesus will still be able to heal my family. Jesus will still be able to reach me right where I am. But we've got to do something. We've got to reach out to him. A woman who had the issue of blood was looking for an automatic transfer. Uh, she set up she set up for herself, I'll say it like this, spiritually, a savings account. Many of us, many of us right now are, are living off of our savings. Preacher, what do you mean? We're living off of the years that we stored up in prayer. We're living off of the years we stored up in going to shut-ins and, and, and all-night prayer services and revivals. Lord, I can talk by myself because I grew up, I grew up being drugged to every kind of church service there could be. And I never imagined, glory to God, that there would be a day in my lifetime when I would be, be denied the gathering of the saints in the traditional way. Lord, have mercy. But I come to understand that there was a substance, glory to God, that was being built up in my spiritual savings account just for a moment like this. That when things look different and hard, glory to God, I was able, glory to God, to go into my relationship with Jesus and be able to transfer some of that power. Lord, have mercy to stay connected with my purpose, to stay connected with my destiny. Lord, have mercy. I'm not telling you that it is easy, but I'm telling you it is possible to get closer to God than you've ever been before. Right now, preacher, how? I don't have the church house. I don't have the praise team. No, but you got a relationship. And I dare you, I dare you to begin to worship God. I dare you to begin to honor him. I dare you to begin just to tell him how wonderful he is, how worthy he is, how mighty he is. And I guarantee before too long, good God, have a mercy. You'll feel the power of God become transferred into your home. You'll see the glory of God begin to descend in your living room. You'll begin to feel the healing power of his anointing flow through your bedroom. I guarantee you, if you could just lift that one hand, just stretch it toward heaven and just begin to tell him God I honor you God I thank you God I bless you I guarantee the power of God the glory of God the majesty of God will begin to descend in your home and you and your family will be transformed glory to God hallelujah woman who had the issue no longer had the issue after she met Jesus. Glory to God. She had a new identity. He called a daughter because she believed. And her belief gave her access to healing and peace. Healing for the years of shame. Healing for the years of being an outcast. And healing for the years of being talked about, healing, for the years of being shunned. That's a very painful thing, to be shunned and full of shame because of a condition that you could not change. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Preacher, what are you saying? Many of you right now are struggling with conditions situations that you can't physically change. But I'm here to tell you, if you can make your way to Jesus, hallelujah, if you can press your way to everything that's crowding your praise, everything that's crowding your worship, everything that's crowding your belief, if you can press your way through, you can just Believe in your heart that if you can get to him, 
you can make a withdrawal that will change your life forever. You and I, when we believe, we receive an automatic transfer. Everything God is, when we touch him with our belief, our worship and our praise, everything that he is, glory to God, is transferred into our present. And he's so wonderful that he has things already set up for us. Things that we will walk into. What do you mean? Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That means there are things already set up in our life waiting on us just to get to it. God has already released everything we need. It's an automatic transfer. It's already positioned before us. And all we have to do is believe. Operate in our belief. And everything we need, we will receive. Because it has already been given. Would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for instructing us on the power of our belief. God, we don't want to be like the multitudes who only look for a deposit, but we want to adopt the faith of that woman who had an issue, who received a withdrawal from your presence, one that changed the trajectory of her entire life one that built a monument of faith for generations to come to receive inspiration, hope, and encouragement that if you did it for her, glory to the Lamb of God, you can do it for us. Father, we receive now the blessing of our belief. Lord, we believe that you are the way we believe that you are the truth and the life. Father, we believe that you have all that we could ever desire, want, or need. So we put our faith, our trust, and our confidence in you and you alone. And Lord, we thank you now for your supernatural provision, for your supernatural healing, for your supernatural deliverance in our lives and in the lives of our families. It is in Jesus' name that we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and we love you. I pray that the Lord continue to bless you I pray that he continue to cover and keep and protect you. We plead the precious blood of Jesus over you and your family. We pray that you stay safe and that all will continue to be well with you and yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I'd like to just give you a couple of announcements. If you want to join us, Follow us on all of our social media outlets. If you want to join us on our Bible studies, we'll be right here as well on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. If you need to give, please see all of our social outlets and they'll instruct you in that. We appreciate you and we love you for all that you're doing. God bless you. Father, I pray for your peace upon these, your people. I pray for your joy in their lives and in their hearts. Father, I pray that you strengthen, comfort, and keep them. 
Father, those, Lord, that are battling anxiety and loneliness, separation, anxiety, Father, I pray right now that you reveal your presence to them, that you wrap your arms around them right now in the name of Jesus. Father, let them know in their innermost being that they are never alone that you have given us a promise that you will never leave us nor will you forsake us so father i pray now for the sweet communion of your holy spirit that it will rest rule and abide with us henceforth now and forever amen god bless you go in peace